time to solve an example involving adiabatic mixing. Here we have 4 cubic meter per second of air at a temperature of 55 degrees Celsius and a wet temperature of 39 degrees Celsius. And we split that into two, one larger, 3 cubic meter per second, and one smaller, 1 cubic meter per second. And the larger we cool down to 18 degrees, and then we mix the two adiabatically. And the question is, what will the temperature of, of the mixture be? Pause here and try to solve this yourself. You can start with thinking about how large will G4 be, the result in cubic meter per second. Okay, I hope you managed to solve this. There are a number of steps you have to go through. And I'm sorry to say that if you think that G4 will be 4 cubic meter per second, you are wrong. If you think that G4 will be 4 cubic meter per second because you have G1 uh, as 3 and G2 as 1 cubic meter per second, what you did then was making a mass balance in cubic meter per second. And that's not okay. You will get large reductions on my exams if you try to do something like that. So as soon as I give you a volumetric flux of a gas, you must translate that into a mass flux kilograms per second. The first thing we do when we solve these kind of problems is to pick up our Molière diagram and find uh, the state of the different airs uh, in it. And G1 and G2 has the same state variables. You have 55 degrees Celsius and wet temperature of 39. So you find the 55 degrees line and then you should find the intersection of that line and the 39 degrees wet temperature line. If you use the same diagram as I do, there is no 39 degrees wet temperature line, but there are some ticks that you can use. So there is a help tick down there and a help tick up there. And you pick up your ruler and then you make a line between the two and that's your 39 degrees wet temperature. If you uh, use graphs to determine uh, the density, which we need to translate cubic meters per second to kilogram of dry air per second, you will need not only the temperature of the air, but also the relative humidity. So what is the relative humidity? Well, you look at the diagram, Molière diagram, and where you put your point for G1 and G2. And it's clearly a lot more than 0.3, so a lot more than 30%, but less than 0.4. And as I explained in another screencast, you can interpret that linearly if you have small x values. And you see here in the diagram, if you pick up your ruler again, that the point is about 80% of the way from 0.3 to 0.4. So we have 38% relative humidity. And then we go to the density diagram. And that has two problems there. They have, we have two x-axis, one increasing to the right and one uh, increasing to the left. And then the other thing is that the y-axis is reversed. So we need to focus here. So first we think of which x-axis should I use. I'm trying to determine the dry density. So it's dry density x-axis I should use. And then I go up to the graphs for dry density. And 38%, we can't measure that exactly in the diagram, but 0.38 is approximately the same as 0.4. So you mark that point there, and then we go out, out to the density and find that to be 1.01. .01. And now we can translate our flows into kilogram per second. So G1 is three times the density, so three times 1.01, .01, which makes 3.03 .03 kilogram of dry air per second. And G2 is one times 1.01, .01, so 1.01 .01 kilogram per second. Okay, so now we can do a mass balance. G4 is G3 plus G2, but G3 is the same thing as G1, since the amount of air doesn't change if we cool it down. It's still the same number of kilograms per second. And what about the water content? Well, we can read the water content uh, for G1 directly in the Molière diagram. But what about G3? 
three. Mm. We cool it down. When we cool something down, we go straight down until we hit the 100% humidity line. And then we follow that line down to the temperature we want to go to. In this case, 18 degrees. So X1 and X2, that's 0 0.0385, according to the Molay diagram. And X3 is 0 0.0129. So we can make a mass balance for water. So G3 times X3 plus G2 times X2 equals G4 times X4. And we can rearrange and then we find X4 as 0 0.0193. And we mark that point on the mixing line. Because remember, if you mix two flows adiabatically in the Molière diagram, the result will be on a straight line between the two. So we mark the point on the mixing line where we have an X value of 0 0.0193 and then we can read the temperature and we get the temperature as 27.5 degrees. And that's the answer to the question. Now, I also said that G4 is not 4 cubic meters per second. So let's check what it is. Uh, once again, we look in the diagram and see where is our G4 point. Well, it has a humidity that is larger than 0 0.8, so larger than 80% and less than 90%, about 83, I would say. And then you pick, take the density diagram again, and now the temperature is 27.5 degrees and the relative humidity is 83%. And you should get something like 1.14 kilogram of dry air, air per cubic meter. Now, when we do things graphically, uh, it won't be super exact, but it will be reasonably fast. Uh, so to convert the 4.04 uh, kilograms per second to cubic meters per second, we divide it with the density and we get 3.54 cubic meter per second. So a lot less than four cubic meter per second. A comment on this task is that we have a cooler here and we remove energy here, we remove heat from the system. So we, we could make an energy balance here and calculate how much cooling is actually needed. They don't ask for it in, in this task, but let's do it anyway. So. What you do is you put up an energy balance and think of what comes in, what goes out. Well, what comes in is G1 times the enthalpy of that stream, so H1. And then what comes out is G3 times the enthalpy of that, H3, plus the Q, plus the heat that is transferred to the surrounding. And, and you can do this calculation yourself. You can find H1 and H3 in the diagram and then you can calculate the, the, the heat released to the surrounding.